Welcome to the OSCE station. In this short web lecture, we will explain how to critically appraise and abstract a randomized controlled trial. The method used in this video is by no means the only way to appraise an abstract, but it's relatively simple. The abstract we have chosen is the Stampede trial, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Pause the video now and take a minute to read through this abstract and attempt to summarize it in a few lines, identifying the aims, results, conclusions, as well as potential limitations and strengths. We begin by summarizing the main points of the abstract. This is a study published by Shao Rattal in 2012 in the New England Journal of Medicine, which has an impact factor of 70. This is a randomized controlled trial, which is level 1b evidence according to the Oxford hierarchy of evidences. Studies further down the pyramid generally tend to have increasing amounts of bias present while also providing a lower quality of evidence. The aim of the study was to determine the effect of medical therapy and bariatric surgery versus medical therapy alone in obese patients with uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. The primary outcome of the study was a proportion of patients with an HbA1c of less than 6% at the end of follow-up. The analysis included 150 patients, of whom 93% completed 12 months of follow-up. The main result of the study was 42% and 37% achieving the primary outcome in the bariatric surgery group versus 12% in the medical therapy alone group, and this difference was statistically significant. The authors therefore concluded that medical therapy plus bariatric surgery improved glycemic control more than medical therapy alone at 12 months. Now we comment on the strengths and limitations of the study and how we would potentially design it differently. In terms of strengths of the study, clearly it's an important topic as the use of bariatric surgery to treat and potentially reverse diabetes mellitus has been an attractive proposal for some time. Bariatric surgery results in the reversal of diabetes in a majority of selected obese patients with type 2 diabetes and is associated with minimal perioperative mortality. The study was conducted in a well-respected academic unit. The Cleveland Clinic is a world-renowned academic medical center and a leader in medical research. It's a high impact factor journal with an impact factor of 70 as we mentioned previously. The level of evidence of this study is high, 1b. The next highest would be performing a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials on the same topic. The study has a clinical endpoint, HbA1c, allowing for good translation into clinical practice. In terms of potential limitations, this would require reading the paper in full for clarification. However, for all similar studies, we should ensure that they have defined population, intervention and control. And specifically for randomized controlled trials, we need to assess whether consort guidelines have been followed. The presence of inclusion and exclusion criteria to assist with external validity, power calculations, the types of sampling method or randomization they've used, and also whether they used allocation concealment. What's also important is whether the study has used an intention to treat analysis or a per protocol analysis. In an intention to treat analysis, all study participants, regardless of attrition or dropouts, are included. It's also important to take into account confounding factors and whether there's any differences between the populations and baseline. It's important to note that this study has a relatively short duration of follow-up. The long-term efficacy and safety cannot be determined in this duration of time. This study is also a single center, an open label study. Therefore, generalizability is limited. It's also important to note that this study was funded by a corporation with further potential for bias. In terms of potential improvements, 
this study was clearly targeted in American markets. Perhaps in terms of generalizability, looking to see if these interventions could be offered to patients who meet clinical criteria in various other countries is important to note, such as NICE guidelines in the UK. Performing this study as a multi-center study will also increase the quality and generalizability of the study results. Having a longer follow-up, for example five years, as to determine the long-term complications and efficacy of intervention, and also performing an intervention to treat analysis. The study we have looked at here was a randomized controlled trial. This is a common study type and it's usually where participants are randomly allocated to a treatment arm, followed up and the results compared. There are various ways and means to randomize a population, which we'll discuss in a further lecture. Allocation concealment. Now, this process prevents researchers predicting to which group they will place the next subject in a randomized controlled trial. This prevents selection bias, whereas blinding prevents observer bias. There are various ways to perform an allocation concealment. It could be sequentially numbered and opaque sealed envelopes, a computer generated number method, or potentially a telephone call to a trials office so the trial researchers can allocate the patients. The p-value is essentially the probability of an observed result assuming the null hypothesis is true. 